This recording will take you through the process of identifying the sexual reproductive structures of Rhizopus sexualis, first of all using the stereo microscope and then producing a wet mount so that you can observe them using the compound microscope. You'll easily be able to see the spores with the naked eye. They're the small black dots that you can see. There are in fact two types of spore. There are the small aerial spores uh, and then deeper closer to the surface of the area of the agar are the sexual structures, the zygospores, and it's those that we want to study. So use the um, stereo microscope to have a good look at the plate, probably starting at low magnification. Um, and make sure that you can identify the two different types. Remember that you can use the focus to change the focal plane and to move from looking at the spores close to the surface of the agar uh, and then move away to those that are further from the surface of the agar. So now we can look at a couple of shots taken using the stereo microscope to show you the two different types of spores. So first the sexual spores um, and you should be able to see the spore the, the black uh, round shape in the middle, and then on either side, the swollen hyphae. That's very typical of the sexual spore. Now, the second picture is the same shot, only I've changed the focal plane using the focusing knob. And now you should be able to see this asexual spore. And it's quite clearly different because it doesn't have those um, swollen hyphae. So what you need to do now is to dissect out some of the sexual spores and prepare a wet mount so that you can observe them at higher magnification using the compound microscope. In order to make um, a wet mount you need to put a small drop of water onto the slide and then just place your specimen in the water. In the case of the rhizopus it's worth probably uh, just teasing the specimen apart a bit so that the spores are well separated. And then you need to put a cover slip on uh, and you need to do this without trapping too many air bubbles. The best way to do this is to hold the cover slip at an angle um, and actually to touch the edge of the water and then to lower it gently. You can do this using your fingers or some sort of implement. If you want to see this demonstrated on video, uh, Dr. Taylor Smith demonstrates it in the video recording about using the compound microscope. This is a wet mount preparation of um, Rhizopus sexualis at times 10 magnification using the compound microscope. Remember you can adjust the lighting as well as adjusting the focus uh, so that you can see all the detail really nicely. Also you can use the fine focus to change the focal plane so that you can look at different parts of the structure. So you should be able to see several examples here of the zygospores. Um, this one is a mature zygospore with swollen hyphae at either side. These are called gametangia and you can see the, um, the smaller finer hyphae going into and out of this structure. You should also be able to see uh, an immature example of the zygospore here. Now you can increase the magnification to times 40. Again remember to adjust the lighting. Um, actually the spores are quite big but it's quite useful to go to times 40 if you want to look at a particular feature. For example here you can see the fine suspending hyphae going into the gamma tangier and out again. In your practical class you'll need to make a careful drawing of some of these zygospores.